Hi and welcome to this video. My name is Justin Noonan. I'm a technical marketing engineer. Uh, with me is Kamal Takodra, who's also a technical marketing engineer. And today we're going to talk about uh, the new enhancements for AOSCX and Central with UI groups. Hey Kamal, I've seen a bit about template groups for CX switches in Aruba Central, but I know a lot of our customers are looking for a GUI type interface for switches. Can you tell us a bit more about what we have in Central for CX switching? Sure, Justin. I can do better than that. I happen to have a VSF stack I want to set up and I'll go through the steps of getting this set up into Central and using the GUI. How does that sound to you? I think that sounds like a great way to get a handle on that. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to log into my Central account. I'm using an internal instance of Central, which is basically used for demos and for some internal testing. Um, so once I'm logged in, I've got this landing page is my account's home. The first thing I'm going to go and do is I've got these 6300s I want to bring in. Let's uh, check if they're in the device inventory. And I, I know they're not in the inventory uh, at, at the moment so I need to add them now normally there's a few ways of doing this of using the installer app with someone on site or effectively I can take a CSV file and bulk upload uh, the devices I want in my inventory uh, also I at ordering point, if I order those particular switches with a central SKU, they will be populated into central. Or I can add them sort of individually, manually putting their serial number and MAC address um, in. Now, I've already got these devices I'm interested in archived, and it's these two switches. So I'm just going to simply unarchive these switches and say yes to unarchive them and uh, they've been taken out of the archive so we'll take a look at the switches now and if we see that the switches i've just added they're in central but nothing really has happened they're not assigned a group they don't have a name they don't have an ip address because they're not online at the moment what has been done is that they've been allocated a, a license. So if I just quickly go back home and look at the license assignment, which is important, you can see I've got the auto assign toggled uh, for um, licensing. So let's quickly go into the switches and you can see that now these two have got this foundation license assigned to those. So um, is that pretty self-explanatory Justin so far yeah that seems pretty straightforward could you explain a little bit more about the licenses to me good point Justin yes yeah. so as I mentioned earlier I've got this auto assign and what that means is when my devices are in my inventory they're automatically assigned the right license they're needed to function and here we have a foundation license specifically for the 6300 on the left we've got the category of uh, licenses and, and in fact currently we've got one two three four categories of license and it's all done by switch family so it's starting off at 6100 cx and then 2500 xx it goes up to 6200 and 2900 then 63 and 3800 and then we have the remaining switches which is the 64, 54, 83 and 8400. You will also notice we have uh, an advanced license option here but that's not in use, something for the future possibly. So um, is that clear to you now Justin? Yep, that's all clear now, thank you. So that's great, Justin. So now we're going to go and try and we need to create some groups. So we're going to go to the main page, home account home, and then we're going to launch network operations. This is where most of our activity and day to day tasks are run from. Um, so uh, typically go to organization and groups are already in there. So I'm going to add a new group. This group is going to be where we're going to push our BSF stack into 
so I'll give the stack a name let's call it VSF um, it's going to be 6300 and we'll just call it GUI group now if it was a template group I would check the switch uh, box here but it's just a GUI group so I just need to give it a password so let's give it a password and they need to match clearly okay so I've added that group it should pop up at the bottom there so it's at, I've added that group now I'm going to configure this group so if I hit the cog button here it will now take me to um, that specific group so I just go into switches as I've gone to switches you can see there's nothing in here at the moment but here on the right I'm offered AOS S option or AOS CX we're going to go into the CX option because we're talking about CX switches here today and when we land on this page for CX we get this lovely new GUI and this GUI offers us five main groupings which is system routing interfaces security and bridging so we can configure you know properties like contact information SNMP information logging parameters admin parameters and then routing static routing today we can bulk configure some ports and links and they've got some security parameters and within those we can drill down further for instance uh, authentication servers i could put in add attack act server which yeah, it will be would be or a radius server so we could add in attack act server just add that in um, we could give it uh, any IP address 1.2.3.4 for instance we give it that shared secret um, and apply that as a, obviously a common parameter um, and then save it that's successfully done so I can then go back let's put some properties in here so let's give it uh, give myself uh, we'll say London and uh, let's give a DNS server so we can carry on and do some nice stuff in terms of uh, resolution resolving names let's save that um, let's also add some VLANs let's add uh, uh, VLAN 100 and call that VL 100 and I'm going to call that user data which is great uh, let's add another one uh, let's call this VLAN 101 and VL 101 and give it description let's call this user voice and make that a voice um, VLAN add that and then maybe one more let's add a VLAN uh, 99 for instance and I'm gonna call uh, VL 99 and I'm gonna call that our north so I'm gonna use that in a moment so i'll add that so i've added three vlans that's great let's go back and well that that's effectively the ui remember we are going to have more parameters coming in the ui now let's go and get our switch into central next okay so uh I've powered up a couple of 6300s and I've auto stacked them using a new fee the new feature in 10.7 using the push button so no configuration purely cabling and I've cabled them up so uh, you can sort of see they've just booted from an auto stack um, you can see details on that in other videos uh, and content that we've created but Rest assured that all I've done is I've just basically plugged it up and powered it on and hit a push button and they have automatically stacked. So 
um, they just need to be now connected to the internet so but if we quickly have a look um, in the uh, device inventory we will <clears throat> and switches we will see that um, we haven't received any sort of internet uh, or IP address but uh, we will get that shortly as they've just been powered up and uh, plugged in so if we wait a few moments we should see that happen okay so now we can see that our VSF stack these two switches have actually contacted Aruba Central and are now um, inside Aruba Central effectively um, just from looking at the device inventory so let's now go to uh, network operations again and take a look at our main page so what we're looking for is we just want to see that the switches are online so I've actually gone into the global in terms of groups organization and gone to devices um, and gone to switches and I can see I've got one switch online and that's the one I'm interested you can see is AOS CX stack um, if I just and we look, we can look at that individually so that's great from our perspective we've got that switch in Aruba Central and that's all tickety boo effectively so let's go um, back to our groups now what we want to do is we want to move the switches that have been pushed into the default group these two switches and we want to put it into our VSF group now I could have done that um, once they're online and configured it afterwards but what we've done is I've created a group given it some parameters they've now contacted us in central so I just click click on them both and then I drag them across to my VSF group that I've just configured so it's asking me do I really want to do that these are the stack switches I say yep yeah, because that's definitely what we want to do so it's now moved those switches into that group as we can see by highlighting the group so now we can take a look at see what the status is of that group so let's go to switches obviously it's online it says it's in sync so that is confirming that we should be uh, all good to go so let's quick have a look locally I have a console directly into that switch just for some convenience for this uh, demo effectively so if I put in the password for that group and if I'm logged in it just shows that yeah the password that I used uh, to log in worked uh, so if I do a show Aruba Central we'll get some information to show that we have contact so the its central admin state is enabled central location it's our internal central instance um, the stack is connected via the management interface and it is connected our source of information was activate because we populated that manually and again we're we're connective connected excuse me and uh, the last connected state was uh, Monday 28th of June and uh, it gives us the URL of the activate server and giving us our IP address locally we can also um, check locally uh, what 
uh, part of the configuration that we applied in that group did apply so um, we can see immediately the TACAC server that I put in if you remember that uh, IP address 1234 I put in was there um, and then if we go a bit further down you can see the VLANs that I defined uh, unauth VLAN 99 VLAN 100 for user data and VLAN 101 for um, voice was there and I think also I added some contact information that should be towards the end and you can see that uh, there's a location of London and the system contact was me and also the DNS server so effectively we have now onboarded this switch into central this VSF stack and we've applied some group parameters uh, that are common uh, so we would put in common configurations for this specific um, switch or switches or groups of switches for a specific location. Wow, Kamal, thanks for showing us that. It's really a lot easier now to do stacking with uh, AOSCX 10.7 and the auto stacking feature. So in our next video, I know you're going to show us uh, multi-editors and more of the UI configuration. So we'll look forward to that in our next video. Thanks everyone for joining. Appreciate uh, the time you've taken to watch this video.